Dan Ullman and Mike Beer are kicking off a pick four sequence at Saratoga on Saturday with race number nine, the grade one Alfred G. Vanderbilt Handicap. $350,000 is the purse. Going three quarters of a mile. Play this wager with a DRF Bets account. Sign up, use the promo code HELLO, and you can start playing immediately. Let's meet the field for the Alfred G. Vanderbilt, and we've got one of the top horses in the entire country breaking from the inside as the even money morning line favorite. All Matoli's done is win his last seven and eight out of his last nine, two grade ones in a row. And in the mile last time out, gold rail? Now nah, he wasn't on the gold rail. He was in the two path pretty much every step of the way. He buried that Todd Fletcher horse turning into the stretch, and he held McKinsey in Thunder Snow safe. My concern is this, Mike. Matoli's okay. a speed horse. Yep. Right next door is Strike Power. Right yep. next door to him is Imperial Hint. Yep. Doesn't Ricardo Santana Jr. just have to run and gun and hope for the best? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he does. Um, because, you know, listen, it's not like he needs the lead to be effective, but I don't see how he can let those horses go and expect to get outside. I mean, he's just got to come out of there running. Um, and we'll see how much pressure they put on him, and we'll see whether it gets to him at the end. I I got to be honest, Dan. I don't have a lot of confidence um, that it's going to get to him at the end because he just looks like he just, he just might be a lot better than these horses. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. His Met Mile was really um, was really something to see because I, I have to believe that that was the best field we've seen assembled for any race all year yeah. long. And he won for fun, despite, as you say, not being near the near the rail. And you know what? I don't think a mile is really his best distance either. Cutting back really helps this horse. Um, I think we're both maybe going to take a little shot against him in here, but let's let's not kid ourselves. He is way the horse to be in here. No doubt about that. And as we see from the time form U.S. pace projector right next door, the number two strike power is expected to put some heat on him. And I would expect that to happen. Because yeah. Strike Power is an extremely fast horse coming out of the starting gate. He showed that in his one and only started, too. He showed that in the swale. And he's picked up as a four-year-old right where he left off early in his career. He's wicked fast. And there's no shame in losing the Catalina Cruiser as he did in the True North last time out. And he held recruiting ready off that entire stretch drive. And I think that's pretty good performance. Yeah, I mean, he's run well in both of his starts since he's come back this year as a four-year-old. Um, you know, he was with a good rail last time. Um, so, you know, he had that going for him. But I still think he ran a nice race in the True North. Um, it's a lot different now with Matoli to his inside because, you know, dueling with that horse is going to be a totally different story for strike power. I don't see how he's going to handle it and still be around at the end of this race. Um, but we'll see what happens. He is certainly headed the right way. When Imperial Hint is right. He's among the best sprinters in the entire country. We have seen that now for about two and a half years. Second in the Breeders' Cup Sprint in 2017. Winner of last year's Vanderbilt, although let's be honest, it was a far cry from the classy yeah. horses he's going to be facing in the 2019 edition of the Vanderbilt. My concern is, while this horse has gamely battled through physical issues his entire career, I'm not sure where he is form-wise now. He hasn't run in since March in the Dubai Golden Shaheen. The comeback race certainly didn't knock anybody's socks off at Tampa yeah. Bay Downs. But maybe Javier can kind of get him the trip out behind the one and the two. Yeah, I mean, he's won, he's run that way and run well before without the lead. So I guess he could do that. Um you know, I, I'm concerned about his current form as well. And I would even, you know, sort of take that back to maybe last year, too. I just didn't think maybe he was quite as good last year as he was in 2017. He is the horse in this field who's got races that in some ways are as good as anything Matoli's ever run. The problem is they were back in 2017. And I don't know if I trust him to get back to that form. He's a really good horse when he's right, though. If there's a barbecue up front, it could set things up for Duchere, who's a true one-run sprinter. We saw that in the Tom Fool. Big pace up front. Here comes Duchere. 105 buyer was the result. Churchill Downstakes thought he ran really well, angling to the far outside, turning into the stretch, finishing up nicely behind Matoli in a race where the pace kind of held together yeah. all the way throughout. Then he had a little physical issue. They ran him in the Nay route. He had no chance. There was no pace in that race. It's a 180-degree different scenario here. But the question is, is he this good? Yeah, he probably isn't. Um, he does have the Tom Fool, which suggests if they you know, light it up in front of him, he'll come running late. Um, the problem is, since the Churchill race, where Matoli beat him, and I agree with you that he ran deceptively well there, um, he was scratched at the gate of the True North by the vet. Something happened. He came back in the in the neighborhood last time. And yeah, the pace wasn't there for him, but he also didn't run a step that day. Um, you have to be very concerned about the form this horse is in right now. 
Diamond Oops, you don't have to be concerned about his form. He's coming in off a win in the graded smile sprint at Gulfstream. That was over a pretty wet track, however, against a very weak field. The summative speed card has kind of been eroded over the last few years. It's not as prestigious as it used to be. Diamond Oops is a lightly raced four-year-old. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a step forward. He's just facing a really tough group here. Yeah, it's a tough spot for him. I like him as a horse. I think he's actually pretty good. You know, for considering he's only he only made one start as a three year old, um, and he's come back to form this year so far. You know, I like everything about him. I just think this is too tough for him. Trainer Ben Colbrook did a really good job with a good sprinter named Limousine Liberal over the last few years. Mr. Crow's not Limousine Liberal, but he's going to take a shot again in this race. He was fourth behind Imperial Hint last year, coming off of a win at Churchill Downs. But just the buyers haven't been there as a five-year-old. I'm just not sure he's the same horse that we saw early in his career. Yeah, he just never really panned out. He's the only horse in this field who has never won a stakes race. He's run two really fast races at Saratoga, but they were way back in 2017, and he never went forward from there. Let's take a look at our top selection, however, for the Alfred G. Vanderbilt. Frenzy Fires cutting back to six furlongs, and I think that's a really good distance for him. He destroyed those horses in the run, happy to back at six furlongs. And I know people are saying, well, maybe he's just a Belmont horse for course. He's fine at Saratoga as well. I thought his Met Miley had no chance the way that race set up. Yeah. Swung. It looked like he was traveling beautifully, by the way, yeah. on the far turn. And almost immediately when I read tipped him out into the forepath, it was like he started running on a beach. He couldn't gain any ground. You could tell the rail was good. I think, by the way, Frenze Fire did not fire in the stretch. Doesn't he just get a great setup here? Yeah, that's how I looked at it, too. I mean, you know, you know he's capable of a really sharp race when things go his way, and maybe they'll go his way here. I, I'm with you, Dan. I like him cutting back. I think he ran deceptively well in the Met Mile last time. In his good race, it may not be able to beat uh, Matoli if Matoli just shows up and fires again, but I think it puts him close. Um, and if Matoli takes some heat, this horse might have a chance to run him down. And again, it's worth noting, you're not a weight guy, but this is one of the rare handicaps still in the country. Yeah, that's Matoli true. has to give seven pounds to Firenze Fire on Saturday. I went with Firenze Fire. He's going to be a better price. Matoli is way the horse to beat. Maybe Strike Power can hang around for a piece. 4-1-2 for me. Yeah, I went 4-1-3. The Alfred G. Vanderbilt, such a prestigious grade one race. It kicks off a pick four at the spa on Saturday. Bet it with your DRF Bets account. Use that promo code HELLO to gain access to the world of DRF Bets. An approximate post time for the Vanderbilt, 544 Eastern. Good luck.